بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to a sister's Ramadan making the most of the month of mercy I am your sister Naima B. Robert and I am so thrilled that you have joined me today this show is all about answering one central question how can we as Muslim women make Ramadan a truly transformational journey from the inside out so that those outward actions that we are doing are a true reflection of a change that is taking place within us. The purpose of this show is one thing and one thing only, spiritual transformation inshallah. And so together we have been exploring the characteristics that we can develop throughout this month inspired by the Quran and Sunnah, but also related to the daily realities of our lives as Muslim women. And so today, in this episode, we will be looking at the characteristic of generosity. One of the most beautiful aspects of Ramadan around the world is the generosity that we see in our families and in our communities. And it, it's truly a beautiful sight to see for people within the faith and for people who are on the outside looking in. And so I'd like to share with you just a few reminders about the value of generosity in our deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, say, truly my Lord enlarges the provision for whom he wills of his slaves and also restricts it for him. And whatsoever you spend of anything in Allah's cause, he will replace it. And he is the best of providers. Another reminder from the Quran is this. And whatever you spend in good, it will be repaid to you in full and you shall not be wronged. So these are ways for us to truly understand that generosity and giving is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always recompenses us for and that it's always coming back to us. So let's look at how we can cultivate more generosity inside and outside this Ramadan, inshallah. I would like to invite you, my dear sister, to look at your life and the people around you who are relying on you this Ramadan and ask yourself, how do you feel about giving them your time your attention, your service. For some of us, the fact that the people around us need us in Ramadan can feel heavy, can feel like a burden sometimes because all we want to do is focus on worshiping Allah, right? We want to be able to read Quran, to go to the masjid, to devote ourselves to worship as we see the men doing, let's be frank. I'd like to offer you a paradigm shift. I would like to offer you a new perspective on your activities and your responsibilities and your duties in this month. We have already discussed the virtue of generosity and we have been reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always return generosity with even more generosity. And so I would like to invite you to look at everybody who wants something from you, who needs something from you. Look at them as an amana and an opportunity for khair. Because if there's someone who needs you, my dear sister, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing you a doorway to khair. He's giving you an opportunity to earn his love and earn his barakah via this person. I'm going to be frank. There are some people in the world who don't have anyone to serve, who don't have anyone to love. They may have lost their parents. They may have lost a spouse. They may not have children, or their children may have grown up and moved away. So they are not in a position to be generous to them anymore. So if you still have people in your life that you can be generous to, I invite you to go through that door of opportunity that Allah has offered you. Because this is the reality of a manna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lends us and he takes away. And your attitude to this amana, this thing that he has lent you, makes all the difference. And if you know anything about me, you know that I like to keep it real. And I like to be honest with my sisters. 
The more we complain about the things that we have to do, the things that people want from us, the more we will feel negative about it, the more resentment we will cultivate, and the worse we'll feel about everything. But if we could shift that paradigm, if we could shift that perspective, and with the understanding that the generosity is something that we have available to give. I can give to my child out of generosity rather than duty, and so can you. I can serve my elderly parents with a spirit of generosity rather than frustration or resentment, and so can you. And so in this Ramadan, when it's a time of giving, and when there is giving and there is receiving, and maybe you're doing a lot of the giving, how about changing your attitude to the giving? Turning it into, we talked about this before, a deed that does double duty. A deed that is done, that benefits the people, but is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Seeking his pleasure, seeking his reward. And see how that changes how you feel, not only internally, but how those actions actually weigh on you. I have known sisters who have been looking after young children in Ramadan, who have been breastfeeding and unable to fast, who have had to cook every night for family members, for people who can't do it themselves, and who have felt the frustration that comes from that. And the reason we're frustrated is that we don't want to do that. We want to be doing something else. But what I am saying is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you an opportunity to serve him through these people. And before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes the door that is open right now, change your paradigm, shift your perspective, renew your intention, and imbue this month with generosity for everyone out there who needs you right now. And see how that feels. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that generosity right back to you. Let us know how that goes. It is that part of the program now where we keep it real. And as you know, my focus in this section is on real questions that sisters are asking and real challenges that sisters like you may be facing. And so our question of the day is this, how can I deal with other people's expectations and demands during Ramadan? Now, today we've talked about being generous, We've talked about shifting our paradigm, shifting our perspective. So we're not out here telling you to stop serving, to stop cooking, to stop doing for others. Rather, you will serve, you will cook, you will look after. So shift your perspective and shift your paradigm and renew your intention. However, some demands are unreasonable. Some expectations are unfair. And this is a fact. And so, my advice to you, if you are dealing with unrealistic expectations that others have of you, is this. Have the difficult conversations as early as possible. Be prepared to compromise and meet in the middle, but be very clear about your own position. And another thing I'd like to advise you to do as well is focus on running your own race. This Ramadan is not a competition. Whether it's for who can make the best biryani, or who can pray the most times in the masjid, it's not a race. You are in a race with yourself and yourself alone. And as I have said before, and I will continue to say, your Ramadan is personal and everything that you do should be between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please renew your intention when you are looking at dealing with these expectations and demands that others are making on your time. You have the right to say, when you can do something and also when you can't and have the conversation keep it open and don't keep the resentment and frustration bottled up inside it's about that time now where i get to pass it over to you and so your challenge from today's show is to extend extend beyond your current circle to other people who may need you we've been looking at generosity today how can we extend our generosity to those around who need us a bit more? Whether they are single moms or new Muslims or the elderly in the community or anyone out there who is struggling somehow, 
What can you do to make a difference to their lives and extend your generosity to them in a way that makes it possible for them to really experience the spirit of Ramadan and enable them to also enjoy the fruits of your generosity, inshallah. As always, share what you decide and your action points with us using hashtag Sisters Ramadan and in our online group. And when you post on social media, be sure to tag Iman Channel TV and myself, Naima B. Robert. I cannot wait to hear the stories of sisterhood, of generosity and joy that will come inshallah as a result of your actions. And as always, may Allah accept all your deeds and I will see you in the next show. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.